Today we use words like machine learning, deep learning, AI as synonyms. We kind of think they all mean the same thing. Technically, there are some important differences. So come with me on a journey as we look at all of these terms. In fact, we will even touch on the Turing test along the way. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. OK, machine learning versus AI versus deep learning and a pinch of AGI thrown in there for good measure. OK, so what is machine learning? Machine learning is a subfield of computer science that focuses on the development of algorithms and statistical models that enables computers to perform tasks without explicit instructions, relying instead on patterns and inference. So this is the key, really, today in any computer program, you specify the steps, even, you know, a game, or accountancy program, you know, whatever it is, it's programmed by a programmer. Now, with machine learning, the idea is that you present it with examples and it learns from those examples, working out what the relationship between these are different things in the example. So it involves training algorithms on data sets to make predictions or decisions rather than coding them to perform a specific task. So machine learning involves two distinct phases, that's training and inference. Now, the training stage, a computer algorithm analyzes a bunch of samples or training data to extract relevant features and patterns. And the data can be anything, it can be numbers, text, image, speech, video, and so on. So the models, and we'll talk more about the models in a moment, uh, look at the data, analyze the data, and decide the different features of the different things in the, in the data set, and therefore learn to understand what is one thing rather than another thing. Now, inference is the second stage, is the output stage, where you take the model that encapsulates everything that is learnt, uh, and then the model can be queried about something that's not in the training data. So hot dog or not a hot dog, you show it thousands and thousands of pictures of hot dogs, then you show it thousands and thousands of things that are not hot dogs, then you show it a picture and you say, is this a hot dog or is it not a hot dog? And it's learned the difference between them. Now, there are different ways of doing this training stage. Uh, the first one is called supervised learning. This involves uh, learning that maps the input to the output explicitly. So you say, this is, you know, a particular type of flower. It's this tall. It's this color. The leaves are shaped like this. The leaves are long like this. And then it's able to infer from that the uh, relationship because you say this is what it is and this is what it looks like. But there are other types of training, for example, unsupervised learning, where the patterns are not labeled. So you just get given the input and the output, and then the algorithm needs to under to work out the connection between them. And there's also reinforcement learning. This is how agents ought to take actions in an environment to reach a particular reward. So the classic would be playing some kind of computer game. It has to uh, get to the end of the level. There's a reward function, you know, you give it a high score when it gets to that point and the agent learns how to get through that in the most optimal way. And so it maximizes for the reward function. And that in itself has a whole bunch of uh, issues, but we're not going to go into that in this video because that's beyond what we're talking about today. Now, I said we'd talk a bit about the models and there are loads of different models that can be used. They're not all neural networks. Uh, that is on the list. Look there, it's the last one on the list, but there are other types of uh, models that can be used. Neural networks are, of course, very popular today, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But you've got linear regression, decision trees, random forest, support vector machines, uh, nearest neighbors, k-nearest neighbors, k-means clustering. These are statistical models, different ways of analyzing data that have been grouped together according to their features, uh, and then working out whether something fits inside of that particular uh, category or not. Now, a neural network tries to mimic how the neurons in the brain work. These digital neurons are arranged in layers. So there's an input layer. Then there are some hidden layers in the middle. And, and, and the number of those hidden layers and the size of them is all part of how you develop a, a neural network. And there's an output layer. So the idea is that you can put in an input, let's say a picture, where each pixel, let's say, is a neuron. There are other ways of laying it out. And then they go through the different layers and then the output uh, is maybe some kind of, you know, what a label, what is it? it? It's a hot dog, it's a cat, it's a dog, it's whatever. 
Now each neuron has weights and biases and during the learning phase the network adjusts those weights and biases so that it produces the correct answer. In fact I have a video here on this channel about how you can write your own very simple neural network to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and once you've been through that training you can see that the neurons actually have the kind of the math built in of what you need to do to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit because it's learned the relationship along the way. And so here's a kind of a quick representation of what a neural network would look like. Input layer, hidden layers with the various connections between them and then an output uh, layer. Uh, and notice they don't necessarily all be the same size. Uh, and this is how you go about designing uh, one of these networks. And it's quite complicated how all that works. We won't go into that now. Now there are various types of neural network beyond just the classic neural network. So you've got a convolutional neural network, specialized kinds of neural networks that are particularly effective for image recognition and processing. You've got RNNs, a type of neural network well suited to sequence data such as time series or natural language. You've got long short memory term networks and advanced RNN architecture that can learn long term dependencies in a sequence of, of data. And then more recently, we've got transformer networks, which is the type of neural networks used by LLMs like ChatGPT. Now, deep learning is really about neural networks. The word deep refers to the number of layers inside of that neural network. Each layer transforms the data it receives from the previous layer, extracting more complex and abstract features as the data moves deeper through the neural network. For example, in image processing, lower layers might identify edges, while higher layers might identify concepts relevant to humans, such as digits, letters, and faces. So as you go through the layers, they're able to do uh, more things, pick up more things. Now, there are many ML systems that we use daily, such as face detection, face recognition, speech recognition, uh, object outlining, object detection, background removal, LLMs, and more. And we use them almost every day you know on our smartphones on our pcs smart you know our home assistants uh, and so on so these are around us all the time right now and these are all types of machine learning they're not ai but what's happened is the marketing department of the big corporations have said what well, machine learning doesn't sell very well that doesn't sound very good. We'll call it AI. So now these things which are really just machine learning, you've trained it up on a bunch of data, it's worked out the relationships, it can recognize a face, it can recognize the outline of an object. That now gets called AI, but in fact it's machine learning. Now what AI used to mean was artificial intelligence in that it was human-like intelligence, but with a machine. So it was artificial. That's what it used to mean. Uh, today, it means any aspect of technology that partially shares attributes with human intelligence. It's very narrow. So very narrow AI is really machine learning. So can you say that's a face? Yes. That's a cat. Yes. That's a dog. It can read a license plate on a car. That is now, that's machine learning. People are now calling it AI. It's really narrow AI if it's anything to do with AI. Uh, but what it used to mean, AI, when you go back uh, 10, 20 years, was, you know, human level intelligence in a machine. Now, to have that human level of intelligence in a machine, you're going to need things like creativity, planning, self-awareness, perception, problem solving, emotional intelligence, spatial intelligence, uh, uh, and so on. So these are what we used to talk about uh, as being AI, but that's not what AI is called today because it's become a marketing term. Now, it's worth talking about the Turing test. So in the 1950s, Alan Turing wrote a seminal paper on artificial intelligence called Computing Machinery and Intelligence. And the paper starts with this. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? And then he wrote a very important paper about it. And in it, he introduces this idea of a thing called the Turing test. Now, the Turing test is a game, the imitation game, where three people communicate via text messages and the reason they do it that way is so you can't hear any voices and therefore guess things through uh, different voices. One player is a man, the other is a woman and the third person is an interrogator and the job of the interrogator is to work out which player is the man and which player is the woman and it does that by asking them questions. However there's a twist. Uh, the goal of one of the players is to try to cause the interrogator to make the wrong identification so basically uh, it lies that per whether it's the man or the woman they lie trying to put the interrogator off 
the, the sense of the right track. And the goal of the other player is to make sure the right decision is made. So not only is there just asking questions and getting good feedback, there's also this idea of kind of deception and trying to work out who's telling uh, the truth. In other words, one player will always be lying or at least manipulating the game somehow. The other will essentially be telling the truth, trying to convince the interrogator of the reality. The idea is then that you replace the lying player, and this is important, the lying player with the machine. And Turing wrote this, I believe that in about 50 years time, he wrote this in 1950, it will be possible to program computers to make them play the imitation game so well that an average interrogator will not have more than a 70% chance of making the right identification after five minutes of questioning. Now, LLMs have basically made the Turing test obsolete because they are able to imitate but without thinking, thus really invalidating the imitation game as a way to answer the original question, can machines think? So that brings us to AGI because we've now kind of the term AI has been hijacked for machine learning. We've now introduced this new word more readily, AGI, artificial general intelligence, a term used to describe a type of artificial intelligence that is versatile and as capable uh, as a human. It's currently a theoretical uh, idea. There's no AGI systems out there. The system needs to be able to learn and apply its intelligence to a wide variety of problems like humans can, even problems it hasn't seen before. So it's not based on its training data. It's able to adapt completely, 100% flexibility to enter into a new situation and say, right, how do I solve this problem? How do I plan for this? How do I make something out of this? Just like we do. Now, it will need to have some various characteristics. One will be a general intelligence, unlike narrow AI, which I talked about earlier, which is designed to perform specific tasks, playing chess, translating languages, recognizing images. AI can theoretically handle any intellectual task a human can. It's not limited to a single domain or a set of tasks within different domains. It must have learning and reasoning skills so that it can adapt to any new situation, just the same as we can. It must be able to understand things so it can understand concepts. It can interpret human language, emotions, social cues, uh, sophisticated human uh, interactions. You know, when you speak with an ironic voice or uh, with irony or sarcasm or you're sad even though you're saying, you know, it's got to be able to pick up on all these things, which is something we do, uh, but it isn't something that a machine can do. And then for a true human AGI, it needs to have consciousness and self-awareness. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, hey, stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.